G'day guys, how's it going? It's Matthew here. Today's video is going to be a quick summary of the pre-patch, including the best legendaries to use, best talent builds, the stat priority to gear 4, and the general rotation in raids and mythic plus or general AoE situations. While I think it isn't too important to discuss these, because there's only 2.5 weeks left of the expansion, I've had people ask me to make this, both here on YouTube and on my stream on Twitch. Shameless plug, twitch.tv slash Matthew2. It's likely that some of the info will be transferable into BFA so it might have a longer shelf life than just these two weeks. We'll start the video off by discussing the legendaries and trinkets you'll be using. It's pretty straightforward to be honest. In raids, you'll be swapping between Heart of the Void, the legendary chest, Magaza's Madness, the legendary belt, and Sephir's Secret, the ring, depending on the fight type. On the trinket front, the Pantheon trinket, Norganon's prowess, and the prototype personnel decimator from Grothy Worldbreaker are the best options. In Mythic Plus, the legendaries you will use will generally be Sephir's Secret and Heart of the Void, swapping out Sephir's for Pridaz if doing a high key where one shots are possible, which isn't a thing until the mid to high 20s. PPD again is a must use trinket with the second slot going to any other AoE trinket you have, the clear winner being Terminus Signaling Beacon from Entoran High Command. So next up we have the standard cookie cutter talent builds for single target and AoE or Mythic Plus situations. In raids, you'll be using Fortress of the Mind or Shadow Word Void, depending on if you're using a legendary belt or not. All the talents in the level 30 row could see use and it's up to you which you prefer. I've used both Body and Soul and Mania in Taurus in the pre-patch, but I haven't really used Sen Lane, because I like to pretend I have at least some ability and really dislike Vampiric Embrace being on the global cooldown. Twist of Fate in its nerf state still beats Misery and Dark Void in most raid situations. Dark Void really only pulls ahead on a fight like Ana doesn't even really matter. The CC row at level 60 is up to you, but I prefer to take Last Word as it synergizes well with Cephas's cooldown on a fight where you can reliably proc, like Agrima. Auspicious Spirits wins out on the level 75 row thanks to the amount of crit we have at 110. It certainly won't be as good when we hit the new level cap of 120. Next up, Mindbender is a clear winner in this row. The other talents, for a lack of a better word, suck. Finally, Legacy of the Void and Dark Ascension aren't too different in Sims, but generally the playstyle of Dark Ascension is preferred because it's new and exciting. In Mythic Plus, Fortress of the Mind gives way to Shadowed Void, as you're not using a belt and the slightly quicker Insanity generation of two Shadowed Voids is very useful in getting to the Insanity required to erupt. On level 30 row, Mania is binned, and while the usual go-to is Body and Soul, Sen Lane could be useful in dungeons where the damage going out is insanely high and your healer needs help. It does sack all mobility, and with gear swapping going away, locking the speed set option, there's nothing to really do except waddle to the next pack. At level 45, I found Dark Void to be the best suited to Legion Dungeons, where the mobs are easily stacked together, and there are often too many to individually dot. It also generates a lot of insanity, which makes casting Void Eruption happen much sooner. The crowd control row is as interesting or as uninteresting as you want it to be. So far in the dungeons I've done, i found no use for any talent besides Last Word for the 30 second cooldown Zephyr's proc. Mind Bomb is terrible, and Psychic Horror will be handy in the future, just not right now, thanks to needing to proc Zephyr's every 30 seconds. The next row is Shadow Crash straight up. I've tried using Auspicious Spirits a few times, and while it did okay damage, it was less than what Shadow Crash would have given, even in kite heavy dungeons where aiming the perfect crash may be difficult. Level 90 is Bender again. There's not a lot of choice in that row, as the other two abilities both aren't great. Dark Ascension wins the level 100 row handily. Double Eruption is strong, and looks cool too. When it comes to stat priority, there's not a lot of time left to aim for gear you really want. But if you are keen on min-maxing, the stats to aim for are high arm level pieces of gear with crit and haste on them. Our general stat priority is intellect beats crit beats haste, versatility and mastery equal in being mediocre. In single target situations, the rotation is very similar to how it's always been, in that you run the priority system of Void Bolt, beats Mind Blast or Shadow Word Void, beats your filler, Dots or Mind Flay, and you run a slightly modified 1 minute cycle. The only differences between Legion proper and the BFA pre-patch are how to use Mind Bender and the new talent Dark Ascension. Dark Ascension on live should be used almost instantly upon entering combat. There's no benefit to holding yet, as we do not have Azurite traits that capitalize on chaining void forms together. Mindbender should be used around 10 stacks or so in your Dark Ascension void form. You can push it a bit later if under the effects of Heroism, Bloodlust, or Time Warp, 
but I won't push it too long. A standard opener would look like Precast Mind Blast, Dark Ascension, Boy Bolt, Dots, and into the normal priority using Mindbender at 10 before falling out somewhere between 25 and 30. Then you enter a new void form and continue the rotation. Reapply dots where necessary, and if done correctly, Dark Ascension should be coming off cooldown around the time you fall out of void form. The cycle then repeats itself. Some people prefer to apply the dots before using Dark Ascension the first time. Both openers eventually reach the same point in the cycle, and the difference between them is inconsequential. Use whichever open you prefer. Shadow in AoE or Mythic Plus situations is fairly straightforward. We'll start with the boring but important filler or sustain AoE rotation. There are a few basic rules to follow on how to maximize the usage of Mindseer to start. Mindseer should replace Mindflay at 3 plus targets and replace Shadow to Void at 5 plus. If the mobs will last long enough, you should be using Void Bolt between Mindseers in order to keep dots active. Mapri Touch should be cast on mobs that will live a decent length of time. Mindbender can really be used whenever. Void Form Length isn't as important in Mythic Plus and it should be treated just as a damage cooldown. A single cast of Mindbender does approximately 13,000 to 15,000 damage. It's pretty solid for a single global cooldown. In AoE situations, you want to treat your AoE spells as important cooldowns to not be used until the time is right. What that usually means is to spam insane generating spells while mobs are being grouped up. Then prick touch on high HP mobs or shadow void or just general mindset spam. Once they're grouped up and the tank has generated threat, or you're prepared to use fade, you dump everything. What I usually do is Dark Void and Crash with Mindseer up until 90 Insanity, forecasting Void Eruption and using Dark Ascension right after to erupt again, before either C spam in until death or going into the sustained rotation. Do not be afraid to hold Insanity or longer cooldowns like Dark Ascension if there is a bigger AoE pack behind the one you're doing now. So, that about wraps things up. I hope this video has helped answer some questions you may have had about Shadow in the pre-patch. If you have any extra questions you'd like me to answer, or if there's something you think I've left out, feel free to comment down below. As always, check out the How to Priest community for more specific and detailed advice than what I have given here. As a secondary shameless plug to go along with the one at the start of the video, please check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash matthew2 or in the description down below. I streamed a lot of high level legion keys in the past week and will likely be doing more before launch. I've also got my subscribe button recently, and I'm looking forward to see how the channel can grow during Battle for Azeroth. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.